15 years ago, I accepted my first corporate job, and I was terrified, terrified. It was doing training and development, doing and selling training. And I had lots of training experience, but I had no sales experience. So I'm on the phone with the hiring manager, and I'm excited and scared, excited and scared. And he says, we're thrilled to have you, and you just need to know that this job is contingent on moving to Fort Collins. I was living in Denver, Colorado at the time. I'd never been to Fort Collins. Fort Collins is about 90 miles north of Denver. It's about an hour and a half drive. And I'm terrified, but I want the job. So I take it, and I move to Fort Collins. About a month goes by. I'm in Fort Collins. I'm doing my job. I'm doing my thing. And I'm the type of person that if I don't need your help, I'm not going to call you. I'm just going to do my thing. If I need help, I'll reach out. If I don't, I won't. So again, a month goes by, and I get this call. Where are you? What do you mean? I'm in Fort Collins, and you know I'm living here. It's really great. I really like it. It was my boss. What do you mean you're in Fort Collins? I didn't give you permission to move to Fort Collins. You are on probation. Every new employee is on probation for their first 90 days. I was going to tell you when you had the right to move to Fort Collins. And I haven't even seen you. What are you doing? It's been a month. I don't know what you're doing. I don't know if you're working. I want to see you every Friday in my office at 2 o'clock. And you should just know that I don't trust you. <laughs> and he hangs up the phone. Right? This is my new boss. And I'm shocked and taken aback. Now, why do I tell you the story? Two reasons. People do not do things the way we do them, even when we think they should. And people leave managers, not companies. So top three reasons for employee turnover. Number one, there's no place to go. I can't develop here. I'm bored. I'm not learning. I'm not growing. Number two, I don't like the people. I don't like my boss. I don't like people I work with. I'm not comfortable here. Number three, and my hunch is you think it's number one, but it's number three, money. How many people thought that was number one? It's not number one, and I'll tell you why. People will look for a job, and they will leave for money when they feel inadequately paid. But when they feel fairly paid and they feel that it's fairly adequate, they're not going to look for a job and leave. So for example, you're at a dinner party, and you're sitting next to a person who's an analyst at a similar company, and you find out they're doing similar work, and they're making about $20,000 more than you. They're going to leap for that reason. They're going to job hump for that reason. But not so much if they feel adequately paid. So we're here today to talk about employee retention. What does it take to build a culture of commitment and loyalty among your employees? And what are you going to do about it? I'm going to tell you what I'm doing about it. After that Fort Collins experience, I had a couple other experiences like that. Since that time, I've worked with Fortune 500 companies and Fortune 50. I've had good managers, and I've had not so good managers. I've worked with publicly traded companies and privately traded companies. And the thing they all have in common is that they never sit me down, or any other employee, so it seems, to say what they expect. So this is a sentence that you could say an oh, duh, after. OK, are you ready? Because I'm expecting a really loud oh, duh. So when an employee starts, managers should sit their people down and state what they expect from them. That was very good. It's so obvious, right? It's so like, duh, and they don't. What's the culture like here? When's the best time to take a vacation? If I want to meet with you, schedule an appointment. Don't just stand outside my door. If I don't get back to your email, leave me a voicemail. Duh. duh. Very good. But in my 15 years of work experience, nobody has sat me down. No one has said, this is what it means to work here, and this is what I expect of you. But then we expect people to know, right? It's a little bit like dating. Gentlemen, you expect women to know what you want, right? This is why, <laughs> this is why I'm not married. Fear. <laughs> so as a result, I created a list of questions. And I call them contracting questions. And the reason I call them that is because a new relationship is just that. It's a contract. And we should take it seriously like we would any other contract. And this is a long list of questions. It's actually four pages. I'll be happy to send it to you. It's on my website. And it contains questions about how to set up a relationship with a peer, a colleague, your boss, or a direct report. But today we're talking about retaining talent. So we're going to talk about building a relationship with your direct reports. A couple of questions. And if you're taking notes today, the first question is really the thing that I would write down. What are three things that would keep you here? And what's one thing that would make you leave? What are three things that keep you at this company? And what's one thing that would make you leave? If you can't answer that question 
or those questions about your employees today, I'm going to say that you're not as effective a manager as you could be. People don't need what you need. They need what they need. So maybe upward mobility is really important to you, but maybe flexibility is important to your employees. Maybe working from home is ultimately important for them. And it may not be something that you can give them. And you may be wondering, why would I ask a question if it's something that possibly I can't deliver? Because either way, you need to know. If it's something they need and you don't know, they're going to leave the organization anyway. You might as well find out and have a chance at retaining them. What's something that you really enjoy doing and it's your biggest strength and your biggest passion that you want to get to do more? What are you not as good at? How do you like to rece receive recognition for a job well done? I was working with a mutual fund company and I was helping them redesign their recognition program. And they had a program called the Employee of the Month Lunch. Familiar with things like this? So it was a big deal. People get nominated. Their colleagues nominate them and their peers. And they have this big lunch. And their bosses, 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 bosses come. And they bring the person on the stage. And it's a big deal and lots of PR and promotion. And the woman who won the last time they offered the Employee of the Month Lunch called out sick for three days after the lunch. She's such an introvert, and she was so mortified by the level of attention, she couldn't manage it. And the best way she could deal with it was to call out sick, completely the opposite of the purpose of the program. So asking the simple question of how do you like to receive recognition for a job well done would have alleviated that problem. She probably really would have enjoyed a handwritten note from her boss, lunch with her boss, a gift certificate for lunch with her husband, costing infinitely less money. But the manager never asked, because he assumed that she wanted what he wanted. So my suggestion to you is get to know your employees. Ask more questions than you think you need to. Be human with them. Take the time. Now, they probably won't answer your questions. At first, they won't. And it sounds like they're kind of personal. And you're, again, probably asking, well, why ask a question I'm not going to get an answer to? Because you get points for doing it. 99.999% of managers, they don't ask. And as a result, they're at the effect of employee turnover. You're engaged in a war for talent. If you want your employees to stay, to create a loyalty, a sense of loyalty and a committed and winning culture, get to know them, find out what they need, and give them what they need versus what you need. Thank you.